Hello everyone, this is Naoki Yoshida, producer of Final Fantasy XVI, and welcome to the State of Play. Today, I'm here to talk a little bit about the story, world, and combat system of Final Fantasy XVI, as well as reveal all new information regarding the game's wide variety of RPG elements and support systems. We'll be talking you through everything while using never-before-seen gameplay footage running on the PlayStation 5. I hope you'll stay with us until the end of the show and enjoy everything we have in store for you. Oh, don't worry. We're in here. Let's get started. We're ready. We're ready, dude. I love Final Fantasy, man. Love it. You all know the target. Shiva's dominant. And only the dominant. Focus, Wyvern. You are key to this mission's success. Yes, Sergeant. I said focus, Wyvern. Home, sweet home. I mean, it definitely looks Final Fantasy. World of Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16 is the latest installment in the Final Fantasy series, a storied franchise with 35 years of history. Yet while this is the 16th mainline title in the series, there's absolutely no need to have played any of the previous games before jumping in. That's what I've always with enjoyed about Final Fantasy games. They're all their own story. RPG features. Final Fantasy 16 has been developed as the first true action RPG in the series. First true action RPG. Wait, wasn't Final Fantasy 15 like action RPG? Fullest, the game delivers an expansive, thrilling gameplay experience which we liken to a high-speed roller coaster ride. Oh my god, dude. Look at those combos. I know summons are going to be like a big thing, but like, I think you can turn into a summon. It's pretty wild. Dude, that's that looks amazing. The protagonist of our story is Clive Rosfield, and his journey takes place in the realm of Valisthea. We follow the epic tale of Clive, shield of the Grand Duchy of Rosaria, as it unfolds across three distinct periods in our hero's life: his teens, twenties, and thirties. Okay, so there's gonna be like time hops. While the story begins with Clive in his 20s, a fully playable flashback will allow you to experience the pivotal events that shaped his past and present. And thus does the curtain open on this newest Final Fantasy adventure. I wonder if you can play with ja in Japanese. I would I would totally be down for that. And I know this is just a demo, but I hope there's like health bars and stuff. Like, how do you know that you're beating an enemy? Damn. I feel like it's gonna be like, like Transformers kind of. Oh, oh. 
Damn, slow down. In Final Fantasy 16 is driven via a world map, with locations being added and updated as players progress through the main narrative. Oh my the god, map dude. can be opened at any time, allowing players access to all manner of locations across Valisthea. Here, players will meet new friends, encounter formidable foes, and uncover great and wondrous mysteries. Oh, dude, it definitely, it feels like Final Fantasy. Which is just kind of what I didn't get from Final Fantasy 15, you know, years back. It's partially why I didn't finish it. I just, I don't know. It felt like there was something missing, but this feels like back to the beautiful mythical worlds that we've come to expect from this series. Open world travel too. And I'm assuming what they mean by like fully live action, you know, is probably there's no like, like you just pull out your weapon when enemies are near or something and just get right to the combat. Next, I'd like to talk about the combat of Final Fantasy 16. It, it, ha it feels a little Final Fantasy 14 too. Real time and are not turn based. As Clive progresses through the story, he will learn a wide array of exciting abilities from the icons that he encounters. Interesting. Now, let's take a moment to admire Clive in action. Clive, dude, that's such a sick name. Yo, <laughs> this is wild. And I know they say there's no turn base, but I, I honestly feel like they're never going to go back to turn based combat as much as, you know, many of us like who started out playing Final Fantasy games would want. Like, I'd love to, for them to go back to like a turn based game. I just I don't know if it's ever going to happen again. It's okay. I'll just keep going back to Final Fantasy X. Dude, combat looks like it's going to be so, so intoxicating. There's definitely a lot happening. Holy hell, dude. This is guy Sephiroth? You know, it kind of feels like um, Devil May Cry in a sense. Like some of the combat. Good lord, dude. Such a beautiful game. I mean, it looks amazing. It actually looks amazing. The abilities that Clive wields have unique characteristics depending on the icon they are derived from. Players can use ability points collected by defeating enemies to unlock more abilities or upgrade existing ones. That's pretty cool. I know it's not like uh, it. It feels reminiscent of the Sphere Grid from Can't Final Fantasy X. Which iconic ability to unlock or upgrade? No problem. You can let the game choose for you. Wow, so like if you don't Final want to have Fantasy to choose includes a range of timely accessories to provide support to those players who may not be so skilled at action games, bringing them a truly enjoyable experience. Players are encouraged to equip Clive with different combinations of these accessories until they find the one that perfectly matches their own playstyle. Interesting. Dude, we are going to be combination I can particularly recommend. We are going to be so deep in this game with action gameplay is the Ring of Timely Focus and the Ring of Timely Strikes. This combination allows players to unleash a wide array of different techniques just by pressing a single attack button, as well as shifting into a window of slow motion whenever Clive is about to be hit by an attack, 
giving them a little extra time to hit R1 and evade. It's pretty interesting. It definitely for like newbies. Players could equip an accessory that fully automates evasion. As I said before, I really encourage everyone to discover the combination that works best for them. I wonder if you're supposed to use these or if it's just kind of like, you know, to help players that aren't familiar with because it definitely is fast paced combat for sure. Turn-based combat was the death of me. I prefer this story, more. A lot of people do. Don't forget yeah. to choose story focus mode before starting a new game. I'm kind of old school. I definitely, I definitely enjoyed turn-based action, mode, and have always wanted them to go back to are it. Automatically equipped from the start, allowing players to immerse themselves in the narrative experience without having to worry too much with the action. But a lot of people do find it boring, you know. Um, and I, and I get that. I, I like the strategy of it. But I mean, there's games that are still out there that, that are turn-based, so. You know, it's definitely not like it, it doesn't exist at all. Clive will meet many characters along his journey who will join him as friends and allies. This place. These are fallen ruins. Well, you didn't think they'd mind. And it keeps the black from our lungs. But how do you survive without magic? Sidolphus, who becomes a mentor to Clive. Jill, a friend from Clive's youth. It really is Such true. encounters and reunions will set Clive on a path of great personal growth. It is. Clive. I wonder if you're gonna have party members or if it's gonna be like uh some of these companions will even accompany Clive on okay. his adventures. That's pretty cool. Alongside him and finding lots to talk about along the way. I like the uh the so, UI. Players will only need to focus on controlling Clive. Party members are fully AI driven, providing support for the hero and constantly adapting and responding to his actions. Dude, it looks so good. stand by him in the face of whatever cruel fate may befall them interesting i like how they're staggered too forward, but players can also give him direct commands just don't forget to give this good boy some treats every now and then goots get her upstairs well but none will don't fret about karen I've taken care of her fee. All of it. She's the best healer this side of the belt. You have nothing to worry about. Go on. Have a look around. I'll be in my solo. After progressing somewhat through the game, Clive will gain access to Sid's hideaway. Oh, Sid. Here in the hideaway, Clive will find a shop where he can purchase new weapons, armor, and consumables such as potions. Oh, oh, dude, I love it. This has everything I want in a game. Blackthorn, a highly skilled blacksmith, works the hideaway's forge. Bring in materials to craft new gear or upgrade existing items. After upgrading your equipment or unlocking new abilities, try accessing the Arete Stone. What does that do? Oh, it's training. Here, players can enter a virtual training area outside the bounds of time and space where they are free to refine and practice combos of their very own. Oh, that could be really helpful. Once you're confident in your skills, try your hand at arcade mode and see how your scores stack up against players from around the world. Interesting. The hideaway is home to a lot of other features as well.
Like you can tell this game's definitely gonna be brimming with like side quests and stuff. A variety of side quests here, but they can also view information on quests offered all around Valistia. I wonder if there's gonna be marks. There were like hunts that you could do in old Final Fantasies where you go like uh, you go hunt down like uh pretty challenging creatures for rewards. Busy saving the world. Mid. When did you get back? Damn, why they call her mid? That's messed up, dude. Big question is will it have multiplayer? I doubt it. Final Fantasy games aren't really known for multiplayer. And you know, outside of like Final Fantasy 14, you know. Oh, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. The patron's whisper. Guys, I'm telling you off the jump, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, and this feels like everything I've been wanting for a long time. Oh! Hunts! Hunts are back! Dude, you want if you wanted to, like, level up and get some good gear, some good stuff, you definitely want to do the hunts. Challenging enemies, but definitely worth the time to go get them. There's also Lorsman Harpocrates, who will unlock Valisthea's secrets as Clive recounts tales of his adventures. Oh, but it's oh, it's like 8-bit! I have quite the find for you today. Oh my god, dude, I love that. You wish to study the tomes? That's adorable. Okay, we're gonna have story time. Story time with Rai. And Vivian Ninetales, a scholar and strategist who will be more than happy to explain to Clive the current state of the realm and provide information on key players. There are all kinds of interactions and features in the hideaway to help players get even more enjoyment out of their time with Final Fantasy 16. That's so dope, dude. I wonder if there's ultimate weapons too. There's gotta be, right? There's gotta be. travels, Clive will encounter a wide array of fearsome foes. Night of the Blinding Dawn. I like the, the theme of this Final Fantasy 2. It's almost like, not necessarily medieval, but... Look at the scale of some of these fights. Oh my god, dude. Quick time events are back. No complaints here. Cinematic class. So it looks like it's going to be you, Clive, your pup, and whoever else you team up with. Clash with the dominance who wield the power of the icons. Wow, dude. These must be these must be like definitely I mean they're definitely boss battles, right? Colossal beasts who hold the surrounding lands under their sway. So it looks like this game is definitely not shying away from challenge. Mysterious constructs of the fallen, a civilization shrouded in mystery. And that music is so sick, dude. Liquid flame.
Dude, the combat just, it looks so fluid. And we cannot forget the icons themselves. Experience unparalleled real-time action combat as Clive takes command of the iconic might coursing through his veins and shatters his very limits. Yo, that's sick. I wonder if they've only the showed it free, but I'm curious if you're going to be able to, to get, like, control of all the icons. Versus icon battles. Yo, this is tough. These epic confrontations all play out in real time allowing players to control their very own icon with their own hands. These battles differ depending on the icon encountered, and every showdown is unique, right down to gameplay. Players will experience everything from a 3D scrolling shooter to a heavyweight wrestling match with devastating attacks that encompass the entire battlefield. That's pretty sick. It looks like all the... These massive scale boss battles are entirely seamless and I can promise you heart-stopping, controller-gripping excitement. I can't wait for you to get your hands on the game for yourself. Titan, Bahamut. I'm, I'm pretty sure we saw Shiva at the beginning of the trailer, too. I think it's so cool that you get to control the icon and, like, battle it out, like, Megazord style. Like, you're playing, like, you're watching uh, Power Rangers. Stone. That's so sick, dude. And it looks like all the fights are going to be different, too. So it won't feel like you're repeating the same thing with every icon that you go against, which is kind of tough. It definitely feels like it's taking inspiration from a lot of, like, from some of those, like, plane simulators that... I used to play. So it looks like I think you're only going to be able to control Ifrit though, even though you're taking on different hyphens or different icons. I think you only control the free, which is which is not bad. And free is definitely like one of the best ones. But it would be cool if you could like, if you could change which icon you transformed into. That's that's definitely something different they've never done before. I'm just glad it's not going to be like this rarity system because I think in Final Fantasy 15 the thing I didn't like was that you could only summon when you were in like desperate need. Like, so if you were almost dead, it was like a pretty low chance that you would actually summon, which I did not like. That was a very weird change. Dude, this is actually <laughs> this is insane, dude. Dude, that was a ridiculous amount of damage. So, everyone, what did you think? Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Final Fantasy 16 will be available worldwide June 22nd. Oh my god, There's dude. still plenty that we've left to reveal. Battle content, side content, end game content, and more. We hope to bring you more on these aspects of the game in the near future. Also, I'm truly excited to finally be able to reveal that Final Fantasy 16's main theme 
was written and performed by one of Japan's greatest recording artists, Kenshi Yonezu. We've still got a lot more in store for you in the coming weeks, and I hope you'll all pre-order the game and join us in Valestia on release day. This has been Naoki Yoshida, producer of Final Fantasy XVI. See you again soon. Dude. Dude, that was gas. That was so sick. We got to break this down. We got to talk about this because uh, there was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot that was shown in this, in this, you know. Now, I know that this was about, this was about 20 minutes or so. Um, but, but within that 20 minutes, within that 20 minutes, I mean, they showed, they showed a lot. Now, Final Fantasy, you know, typically Final Fantasy games are ones that are typically shrouded in mystery. You don't find out too much about them before they release. Um, this is this is the most information we've gotten for a Final Fantasy game before release in a long time. Um, obviously, the general tone of this game draws me in. In fact, this feels somewhat reminiscent to Final Fantasy 12 in terms of its art style, in terms of like, yeah, just in terms of its general art style. I definitely feel like it's a mythical, magical fantasy world and that's what i've come to really enjoy about final fantasy it's what i enjoyed about the early ones it's what drew me into final fantasy 10 you know when they talked about spira and like that whole world the enemies that you would go against i mean that game really drew me in to the final fantasy world and then i went on to final fantasy 12 and you get something similar to this where it's just kind of uh i don't know what the best term is for it i can't think of it right now but it's like it has a it's like a royal royal theme you know everything is just beautiful and brimming with life i mean you get the uh you get the uh what is it the the moogles let me see if i can go ahead skip ahead really quick he passed like he passed like a little moogle at the beginning now this is one thing that's interesting is that they say that the combat is going to be very seamless uh there's not going to be any pausing you know, between like you not battling and you battling. This is even something that Final Fantasy 15 did where it had you, you would be in this kind of roaming state where you're just running around and stuff. And then all of a sudden the combat would, combat mode would turn on. And that's when you get into a fight, which was, in my opinion, it was almost seamless. I don't see how that wasn't seamless. Uh, but this one, it looks like you're constantly going to be ready to throw hands with just about anybody that comes and tries to step to you. Um, one of the big things that I think they really tried to highlight in this was obviously the iconic massive scale battles between icons you're going to be able to transform into a freet uh which i guess is your own icon and you're going to be able to use those abilities and that strength to battle off against uh some of the other icons now what you get when you beat them i'm not too sure it didn't seem to say um it seemed like you could learn new abilities from these from these icons that you face but it doesn't seem like um it does not seem like you're going to be able to transform into the icons themselves, which I thought would be really cool. I think it is cool that you can, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to level up your icon and some of the abilities that you get from these battles. I'm sure you're going to be able to use to improve your icon and how, you know, how you fight in battle and stuff. But yeah, and I was, I was hoping that you would be able to, um, I was hoping that you would be able to transform into any icon that you beat so if you beat an icon you would absorb their powers and be able to transform into them or a different version of them something like that either way not a big deal then we move on to the map uh obviously this is a very expansive map uh again probably might be one of the biggest maps that they've they've shown in a while you know outside of something with you know as much scales like final fantasy 14 there seems to be a lot here for people to explore and do which i'm very excited about um Obviously, in typical Final Fantasy fashion, there's allies that you're going to be able to encounter. There's obviously main quests. There's it looks like there's a ton of side quests, hunts, different little favors that you can do, uh, areas that you can explore. Uh, it looked like they were mentioning something about like some sort of dungeon, massive towns for you to explore. Um, which I mean, come on, can we can we just take a minute? Can we just take a minute and just appreciate this the true beauty that exists within this game? I mean, it, it, it truly is stunning. It truly is stunning. I, I like watching this trailer. I can honestly tell you I'm going to be spending hours and hours in this game. It, it has that gripping 
kind of uh, magnetizing factor about it where it just feels like the combat's just going to feel crispy. You're just going to want to jump into the story. And with, with Final Fantasy games, I've always been prone to doing a lot of the side quests and doing a lot of the optional stuff. One, because it's a great way to level up. It's a great way to practice the combat systems and like new abilities that you get. And it's just a great way to, you know, continue to explore the world and the characters and, and all that stuff. So I, I definitely feel like there's a lot here for you to do. Um, like I haven't been this excited for a Final Fantasy game in a while. Uh, and I think that, I mean, that's a good thing. Like, like I said, the last Final Fantasy I played was 15, obviously. And I just, there was something about it that I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. So it looks like here too, you get different attributes. So obviously, I mean, it's, it's an RPG at its core. Leveling is going to be a thing. Ability points. Gil comes back, of course, as you know, you would expect from a Final Fantasy game. Um, but it looks like, I, I like the UI. I mean, the UI is pretty clean. I mean, there's, I mean, you really can't complain about it and different abilities based on, I don't know if it's based on the two icons or if that's two different. I'm not sure what that is on the right with the two abilities, the rising flames, scarlet cyclone, gouge and wicked wheel. It looks like you might be able to transform into two different things. I don't know if the second one down here is, is a free. It doesn't look like it, but I could be wrong. It could be, it could be someone else entirely different, uh, equipment. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like there are two icons that you can pick between. I wonder how that's going to work. They obviously only showed a freed, but there could be a potential where you could transform into other icons. They just never showed it, which is, I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, as you can see here, just mass, dude, it's just a massive map. I mean, this is just one area, one sector, right, that you can explore. I'm sure there's so much more for you to do even just outside of this area. But I mean, they really it's just the environments, the environments are so varied. Final Fantasy was always ahead of the game on graphics. Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy, even before like many other games, Final Fantasy was the game that pushed the boundaries of what graphics and what these consoles and, and what, what games could look like. I mean, they like it's what i remember final fantasy 10 there used to be scenes in final fantasy 10 that were like cgi generated um and i used to call them good graphic scenes because you always like you'd play through the game and you'd get like regular cut scenes that you get normally right and then there were a couple just so crispy beautifully toned cut scenes that you would get every once in a while and obviously this was like ps2 so you wouldn't get them all the time but i was like oh it's the good graphics it's the good graphics <laughs> and to this day man i remember i remember just being blown away by how good these final fantasy games look even going back to final fantasy 10 obviously you know it doesn't look as some it, it doesn't look as good as some games that exist now but it still looks pretty darn good you know every time i try to save money they drop a good game like this dude i'm saying i'm saying i'm like dude i really am not trying to spend money on a bunch of games but then we came to this year and we had dead space in january we had uh we had uh what is it um you had hogwarts legacy in february resident evil in march jedi survivor in april breath of the wild 2 in may final fantasy 16 in june and then maybe maybe if i didn't forget about something maybe you'll get a little bit of a break between you know between june and whatever the, the fall games come out which i'm sure will be announced this summer what other games will be dropping but the combat looks great i mean like i said i i am always you know pushing for them to just just to go back at least once to turn based and i kind of worry that even if they brought back final fantasy like if they ever did a final fantasy 10 remake which is my favorite final fantasy of all time if they ever did a remake for that i feel like they would change it to a to an active battle system uh, which i think would would probably upset a lot of people but I mean, I said that same thing about Final Fantasy VII, and then they they changed the combat, and people actually really liked it. So I'm sure if they did change it, people would like it. But I think there would be people who would want the option to 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 have like a turn based toggle. You know what I mean? Like where you could you could toggle it for turn based if you wanted to. Um, but we'll see. Or maybe that's something you can pick from the beginning. I don't know. I don't even know. I feel like there's some limitations, but just with that, you'd have to almost make two very different games in order to make that possible but i mean if they can make if they can remake final fantasy 7 i definitely feel like a final fantasy 10 remake is is coming I, I definitely feel like that's possible i definitely feel like that's possible but yeah even even if it's not turn-based the combat still looks really crispy here 
looks beautiful it looks chaotic which i typically enjoy i just love shredding out on a bunch of enemies and just <laughs> just having a good time um but yeah so the combat looks really good the open world looks really good this this i mean final fantasy always has a bit of a learning curve when it comes to learning learning how leveling up works and what you should level and things like that um, which it looks like they do have like an easy mode toggle that you can activate so that the game chooses what you have but this feels very reminiscent of the sphere grid from final fantasy 10. um in my opinion nothing will ever top the checkerboard that you got in final fantasy 12. it was like this this it was like this big checkerboard with all these different abilities and, and stat boosts and things and you could choose which path you want to go as you go to try to unlock this checkerboard the only thing i didn't like about it was that there are certain weapons that were locked in the checkerboard so you had to get to a certain point to be able to equip this weapon i didn't like you needed the license for it which i did not enjoy um, i felt like if you got a weapon maybe it had a level requirement but i feel like having it a, a locked behind a thing was was pretty annoying either way it was fun it was fun um what else stuck out what else stuck out uh, obviously the story, the story looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, again, I like the general style and the aesthetic of the game. The music is obviously, uh, the music is definitely something that really, really grabbed me. Like I just, I liked the music. I don't know who made the album, but it's definitely going to be in my playlist in the future. The Pupperoo, having the Pupperoo around with you. I was like, dude, instant 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Anytime you can have an animal or a little pup fight alongside you, I'm sold. I'm sold. Like that's all you need. Um, what else is there? A uh, little training grounds, I think, was pretty cool. Uh, it, it, you know, like I said, it just feels like a game that's going to be very engaging. Uh, there's, it seems like there's just a lot to do. There's a lot to do. The story mode here that you get, the thousand tomes, where you get to experience a little bit of of a story. I don't know what this is gonna do. Leveling this up, I'm sure there's gonna be some prizes and rewards that you're going to get for for leveling this up but i mean it still looks pretty cool and i love the 8-bit style that they had in, involved in this too and then as well as like the connecting web of storytelling the final fantasy games have always been known to have a lot of different characters a lot of different stories um and it can be difficult to follow at times but i do like that there's an option for you to kind of go back and see how all these pieces connect like you know between your main protagonist and how how they're connected and what their relation is to other characters i think that's gonna be pretty cool pretty cool for anybody that's like easily confused or lost by you know just some of these things i think that's that's pretty cool bosses are back epic bosses epic boss battles i think like the knights of the blinding dawn i don't know if they're story bosses or if they're gonna be uh optional bosses that you can go fight always liked how final fantasy games had optional you know challenging enemies that you could take on always thought that was really cool but other than that optional bosses the hunts are back too which i think is pretty cool um and then obviously they spend the rest of it talking about the epic battles that you'll be able to do with the icons i don't know what the icons are what their relationship is to the story of final fantasy 16 i don't know if they're just like like it has me thinking of like um what is it called it has me thinking of naruto in the sense that there's like people who have who are known as icons and they have these abilities to transform into these quote-unquote tailed beasts like naruto can transform or is you know has the power of the nine-tailed fox and and pretty much every village has a, has a tailed beast that they could use to destroy another village if they wanted to whatever um it kind of had me feeling like that in terms of like because obviously your character clive he can transform into a tailed beast or an icon and take on other icons again i don't know what that what that's all about like why you have to fight these things but i mean hey it i mean they, they definitely wanted you to know like they're going to be big scale battles that you can engage in that are going to be pretty interesting so i'm excited man overall guys i think this was uh this was fun i think this game is going to be amazing i was looking forward to final fantasy 16 but i my my excitement was you know it was very low because there just wasn't they hadn't really shown a lot about it outside of a, a couple trailers but this 20 minutes of extended looks and gameplay definitely gave me a taste of of what exactly we're going to be experiencing when the game drops so expect this to be our our game of the month for june we will definitely be playing final fantasy 16. like i said every month has been a new game between you know uh, dead space you know hogwarts resident evil 
in april we're going to be and in april well actually we're in april jesus we got to finish resident evil 4 remake because we only have like two weeks before the release of jedi survivor and i'd love to go back and replay jedi fallen order at least as much as we can replay it before the next one comes out so yeah and then in may mid-may we'll be playing breath of the wild 2 that's gonna be very exciting dude there's so many games to look forward to but yeah definitely june june is locked in now for final fantasy 16 i cannot cannot wait cannot wait holy moly hopefully there's nothing i missed i feel like we got everything you know for the most part um this was pretty cool though